Well, Vaughan, it's been about six months since we caught up. You fitted in a lot of golf in between uh, the SBS and today. Yeah, there absolutely has been a lot on my plate, which has been uh, fantastic. All right, uh, first up was Australia for some pennants golf in, in Melbourne. Yep, I went over and played for a golf club over there. Um, they set me up a, a great base with somewhere to stay and um, a place to practice, which was awesome. Got me a job and um, put in some really hard yards over there. Actually, just was most looking forward to the facilities that they had to offer, so I made the most of them. And what sort of competition results did you enjoy? Um, over there, I was... I had a pretty good record. I lost one out of eight matches um, playing at number two in the team, so that was uh, pretty satisfying and got me a good invite back for next year as well. Must have been playing on a pretty good team when you're number two. Who was number one at the club? Uh, we had um, Taylor McDonald in there. He was uh, number four for Australia at the time, so we had a pretty strong lineup. From there to the UK and, and quite a long trip through, the, through there. Uh, yeah, had a, a few weeks in the UK um, where the highlight from my events were uh, the Berkshire Trophy where I finished second. Um, so that was a, a fantastic week to finish on a real high in the UK and uh, yeah, I was, I was just wrapped. How was that opportunity created? Did you just pick out a few tournaments that you thought might suit you? Yeah, um, went on to um, did my research and picked out the highest sort of ranking events um, over the trip and, and that was one to play. Do they count towards your world ranking as an amateur, do they? Yeah, yeah. so uh, the better you can do, the, the higher you climb the ranks. Which is what at the moment, just just for the record? Um, 75th on the Scratch Players ranking. Yeah. Which is the highest you've been? Uh, yeah, to date, yep, it's, it's great. Okay, so from there to the States and that was a whole new world But because uh, it was the first time over there? Yeah, uh, first time I've been to the States and I was really excited to get there. Uh, and the first event in Transmiss, I got 20th, which I was, I was pretty happy with. Um, continued on to to the Southern and the Western Amateur, which I missed it, cut at both after an unfortunate incident on the uh, 17th hole. Uh, cost me a slow play penalty where I had a bit of trouble with some trees, didn't meet the time par, and uh, failed to reach the... Um, the, the time required so I copped a one shot penalty and missed the cut by a shot there. So th Did you get a warning about that? Did you knew something was coming? Um, no. There was um, yeah it was it was a strange turn of events but you just had to take it on the chin and move on you know. Um, but you missed the cut by one and you thought back to that day and thought that close? Yeah you, you do think back to that but that's okay you, ha you have your opportunity and my opportunity was the next week where I qualified for the US Amateur, so I bounced back so well and I was just extremely excited. That was obviously the highlight we heard about that here, but explain the difficult processing and what you have to get through to, to qualify. Yeah, it's uh, it's quite a mission. Uh, there's Over the whole states there's 91 qualifying spots, uh, 250 places up for grabs and a total of 7,500 people qualifying through those 90, 91 qualifying places. So it's an unbelievable um, number you're going up against. So you're going in there knowing you have to shoot a great number is pretty tough as well. Um, so to overcome that and, and make, make the field was just incredibly exciting. Was there any preference for Americans or was it just open slather? that internationals can just front up? Yep, anyone can uh, turn up and play and that's why the numbers are so massive. Before we talk about that particular round, and uh, let's talk about the difference between golf in America and other places. What, what are the fundamental differences you discovered? Uh, in America, it was quite beautifully manicured. Everything was to perfection. Uh, whereas if you play in the UK and New Zealand, you know you get a few. You're battling with conditions, and uh, the weather doesn't go all your way. The draw is not always the same for each side of the draw. So there's uh, different things like that. Also in America, the the grass is a lot different. It's a lot stickier and and can hold down your club a little bit, a little bit more. So um, all that experience is pretty cool. What about uh, the greens? Are they quicker, or is there any difference there because of that grass difference? Um, the greens are pretty similar and react pretty similar when you're hitting into them, and they they putt pretty similar, but just a lot faster and a lot smoother. So tell us, are you nervous going into that uh, U.S. Open qualifying? Uh, into the amateur qualifying years. I was pretty nervous. In fact, uh, through my second round, it's a two-round, it's a two-round event. 
going into that second round I was incredibly nervous and uh, throughout the round again incredibly nervous but uh, still managed to keep the composure and pull it off. And you just missed out on getting all the way through but uh, what sort of numbers were the, were the qualifier shooting? Uh, they're pretty good and the way the course was set up was unbelievable. It, uh, the rough was unlike anything I've ever played, over six inches long um, and and really tight fairways and no fairways around the greens which was incredibly interesting. It just went from green to six inch rough. So uh, the numbering scoring wasn't quite good because of that reason but uh, it just it was set up like a US Open. It was incredible. Great experience to play. Absolutely. So homeward bound after that? Yep. Uh, I've been uh, back home for the last four weeks, uh, back working on the dairy farm and uh, hardening up the hands, ripping out some fences, doing some milking. So, uh, no, it's cool. And then uh, I've enjoyed my break off from golf, getting back into the practice now, though, um, ready for a couple of events coming up. Yeah, well, tell us about that. There's one in particular that's quite exciting over in Asia. Yep, I play uh, Asian Amateur coming up at the end of October, um, and the winner of that gets into the US Masters, so um, see me on TV playing the US Masters would be pretty cool. It's, that's a dream. You've got to visualise. Visualisation's a big thing in golf, isn't it? Oh, and I love to visualise that. <laughs> it's not an easy uh, tournament to win, though, because there'll be a lot of other pretenders. Yeah, uh, I'm sure um, Guan Ting Lang will be trying to defend his title. He was um, the 14 year old, was he? He was 14 years old and, and won last year, so you know, it's incredible how young these guys are and winning. It made you feel like an old man. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, it is a bit like that, but oh, no, I'll just stick to my own, own books, so it's all good. Yeah. Uh, he did all right too when he got through to the Masters. Yep, he made the he made the cut as well. So um, incredible feat for a young amateur. He got a slow play penalty. I think you reminded me. Yeah, he did too. <laughs> all right, um, preparation for that. Uh, any competition here, or is it just practice at the range? Um, practice at the range, and I've got um, playing for Southland next weekend at Cromwell in a in a triangular between Otago, Aorangi, and Southland. So that's a eight man team. Um, so I look forward to representing um, province there. Now we've heard Lydia Coe's going pro sometime soon, hopefully. Uh, I always ask that question, is your mind changing about that? Are you still in the amateur ranks for a while yet? Um, I've got a, got a pretty good theory on that, that uh, about the way I practice. If I set a date, then, I, then the way I go about every day's practice will show that I'm not going to be good enough until that day. So um, I'm just trying to tick every box the best as I can on today's basis. And uh, once it's time to go pro off the numbers, then, then that'll be the time. Because you must see guys you've grown up with in the amateur ranks just slowly filter their way into that competition. You must be hankering to follow them? Yeah, I'm um, pretty keen, but uh, I'm just going to do my apprenticeship and, and do my time and, and take my time as long as it takes. Because it sounds a better life than getting up to milk the cows at five o'clock in the morning to me. <laughs> uh, the golf's pretty cool, travelling the world, um, you know, it's pretty awesome. Thank <laughs> you.